Hi again. This is Deb, and this is session number eight of The Value of Quietude. Today's session is entitled Falling Back Again. The last one was entitled Steps. And it occurred to me, after that recording, that you might have questions about um, why we talk so much about baggage and why we talk so much about the past when what we really want to talk about is being able to have quietude. Well, in order to have quietude, I think that all of those things in the past need to be quieted down, so to speak. We need to be able to um, handle the things that have happened to us that have caused shame or guilt or pain or wounded us in some way, we need to be able to handle those things and make them stop yelling at us all the time. That we're not good enough, that we're not tall enough, short enough, rich enough, not something enough. So that's the reason why we're delving into these questions first. So that when we get to the real quietude part, you'll, um, you'll be able to um, not only work on those things, but in time, after doing this uh, process over and over again, you will be able to get to that quietude spot really quickly. And so that's what it's all about. Now today, I'm going to talk to you about falling back again. And um, we've already talked a little bit about, you know, things getting in the way and you not wanting to... Uh, proceed further. Procrastination. That's, um, that's me. There's always something else that's a distraction. Um, recently distraction, procrastination has taken away my quietude. And along with that, um, it's just a whole lot of scattering kind of thoughts and feelings going on. And I know what to do. But when I come up against confusion and that cacophony of noises and sounds and voices, it makes it really hard to get it done. So I have to remind myself that I have to practice what I preach. So that's what I'm doing here. I want to tell you guys three main questions to ask during quietude to help you not to procrastinate, to help you not to be distracted. These questions are really, really important. Like I said in a previous session, um, the more questions I get, the, I don't know, the better I get inside because the questions that come from other people, uh, the questions that come from things that you read or things that, that you hear, those questions help you to delve deeper. They help you to excavate a little deeper. And um, so that's that's a really important part is to have those questions. So the questions I want to ask you, have you asked yourself when you're thinking of any of these things? Number one is, has God really said did God really say this or did he say something else? Who said this? It's all the same question. Hath God really said? Then go to question number two, which says, who do you say that I am? I asked, had to ask God, who am I? Who did you create me to be? You said I'm fearfully and wonderfully made. What does that look like? What does that mean for me? And that um, that journey is just taking one step at a time. You start real slow, and then as you go, then it gets a little easier to remember. Question number three, I always ask God, will you just please tell me the truth? I just need to know what the truth is. If we know what the truth is, then we can do anything. So we need to know the truth about us. We need to know the truth about our circumstances. And we know have to know the truth about our God and how he feels about us, created us, made us to be, and what that special thing is that he put us on this planet to do specifically 
to help someone else? What is that? That's a whole lot of questions rolled up into three. So I know that um, one of the mentors I have is Graham Cook. And he asks these two, he asks two questions whenever he's reading scripture. And um, those questions are, what does this mean? And what should I do? What does this mean? And what should I do? When you hear these questions and you figure out or you read uh, in your scriptures or you read in a book, what does this mean and what does it, what do I do? What do I do after I've heard this? This is not a microwavable thing. We want things microwave. We want them fast, fast, fast. It's not going to be fast. It's going to be a process that is one step at a time. One step followed by another, followed by another. And believe me, when, by the time you uh, get there, and six months from now, if you're faithful with this and you don't procrastinate and you don't get distracted, but you keep on moving and you keep on asking those questions and you keep on sitting with them and you keep on excavating, you keep on digging. Wow, you'll look back in six months and you won't be able to really believe how far you've come because it's just one small step at a time, one step at a time, one step at a time. And so, we're not going to fall back again. We're not going to do that because we're not going to allow that to happen. But the way we're not going to allow that to happen is to ask ourselves these questions again and again and again until they become second nature. So, that's all I have for you today. Um, the plan is for next session, session number nine, to actually have quietude in practice. In other words... I'm going to um, not ask you these questions anymore. I'm going to show you a way, one of my favorite ways actually, to um, get quiet and to keep quiet and to keep things um, undistracted. And sometimes all it takes is five minutes a day and that's what I'm going to show you. And we're going to, we're going to actually do this together. So. Um, join me next time, and I hope this has been helpful. Uh, join me next time, and we will continue. Until then, take care of yourself, ask yourself some questions, and take some time to hear the answers. Bye now.